This is Land of Havilah, Genesis 25. Coming up, with Sarah having passed away, Abraham will remarry. Father, please open our eyes to the scripture. Verse 1. Abraham took another wife, and her name was Keturah. She bore him Zimram, Jokshan, Medan, Midian, Ishbak, and Shua. Comment, Abraham now has six more sons besides Ishmael and Isaac. Midian will become a nation identified with the northwestern area of the Arabian Peninsula. We'll hear that name many times. Verse 3. Jokshan became the father of Sheba and Dedan. The sons of Dedan were Asherim, Latushim, and Lumim. Comment, we'll be hearing about the nations of Sheba and Dedan several times in the Old Testament, but it'll never be clear whether they're this Sheba and Dedan or the other Sheba and Dedan that were in the line of Ham. Verse 4. The sons of Midian were Ephah, Epher, Hanak, Abida, and Eldaah. All these were the children of Keturah. Abraham gave all that he had to Isaac, but Abraham gave gifts to the sons of Abraham's concubines. While he still lived, he sent them away from Isaac, his son, eastward to the east country. Comment. In sending these sons to live in other areas, Abraham was being faithful to what God told him. In chapter 21, verse 10, Sarah said that Ishmael, quote, will not be heir with my son Isaac, end quote. And God told Abraham in the next verse, Don't let this be grievous in your sight. Listen to Sarah's voice, for your offspring will be named through Isaac, end quote. And God told Abraham that the covenant and the land would be Isaac's and his descendants. So Abraham is being faithful to that by sending his other sons elsewhere. They don't have any future in Canaan, Abraham knows by prophecy. Verse 7, These are the days of the years of Abraham's life which he lived, 175 years. Abraham gave up his spirit and died at a good old age, an old man and full of years, and was gathered to his people. Comment, he gave up his spirit, and he was gathered to his people. There's no explanation in the Bible so far what this means except what it is at face value. We'll get more hints about the afterlife as the Old Testament unfolds, and much more about the afterlife in the New Testament. Already the terms imply that Abraham's spirit lived on, that there was consciousness after death, that God gathered Abraham's spirit into the presence of other godly individuals, particularly departed family members. He gave up his spirit and was gathered to his people. Abraham's gone, but God gave him an eternal place. How else could it be that God could reward Abraham with a multitude of offspring if Abraham wouldn't be around to see the offspring? Jesus confirmed that Abraham still lives, Matthew 22:32. Verse 9, Isaac and Ishmael, his sons, buried him in the cave of Machpelah in the field of Ephron, the son of Zohar the Hittite, which is near Mamre, the field which Abraham purchased of the children of Heth. Abraham was buried there with Sarah, his wife. Comment, Ishmael was present at the burial to recognize his father's passing. So after Abraham sent Ishmael out as a youth with his mother, Ishmael was still in contact with the family. We don't hear whether the sons of Keturah were at the funeral or not. Of course, Isaac and Ishmael placed Abraham's body with Sarah's in the cave of Machpelah, as it says in verse 10. Abraham was buried with Sarah. We said our goodbyes to Abraham. Now, verse 11. After the death of Abraham, God blessed Isaac, his son. Isaac lived by Beer Lahay Roy. Comment, God blessed Isaac like he did Abraham. It's easy to read over that, but so important. Verse 12. Now this is the history of the generations of Ishmael, Abraham's son, whom Hagar the Egyptian, Sarah's servant, bore to Abraham. These are the names of the sons of Ishmael, by their names, according to the order of their birth, the, first, the firstborn of Ishmael, Nebaioth, then Kedar, Abdil, Mibsam, Mishma, Duma, Masa, Hadad, Tima, Jetur, Naphish, and Kadima. Comment. Isaiah chapter 60 specifically mentions Midian, Ephah, Sheba, Kedar, and Nebioth from this chapter. These descendants of Abraham became nations, and with the other nations of the world, they'll come to the light of Yahweh and proclaim His praises in a future time of peace and prosperity, when Yahweh Himself will be present in Jerusalem. So Yahweh never forgot those nations or any nation and intends to bless them. Verse 16. These are the sons of Ishmael, and these are their names by their villages and by their encampments, twelve princes according to their nations. 
Comment, God came through on his promise to make many nations from Abraham. Verse 17. These are the years of the life of Ishmael, 137 years. He gave up his spirit and died and was gathered to his people. They lived from Havilah to Shur that is before Egypt as you go toward Assyria. He lived opposite all his relatives. Comment. In other words, Ishmael's descendants multiplied and lived in the desert area south of the promised land and east of it. Ishmael's descendants mixed with some of Abraham's other descendants, and today Arabs in these regions acknowledge Abraham as their forefather. Verse 19. This is the history of the generations of Isaac, Abraham's son. Abraham became the father of Isaac. Isaac was 40 years old when he took Rebekah, the daughter of Bethuel, the Syrian of Padanaram, the sister of Laban, the Syrian, to be his wife. Comment, Isaac was 36 when Sarah died, and we see now he was 40 when he married Rebekah. Verse 21. Isaac entreated Yahweh for his wife because she was barren. Yahweh was entreated by him, and Rebekah, his wife, conceived. The children struggled together within her. She said, If it is like this, why do I live? She went to inquire of Yahweh. Comment, Rebekah felt a commotion in her womb. She knew from the Lord there was meaning to the commotion. She knew she had twins, and she knew the struggling was a sign they wouldn't get along. She was so distressed about it, she said, Why do I live? Everyone wants their children to get along, but she knew from the Lord that they would not. Verse 23. Yahweh said to her, Two nations are in your womb. Two peoples will be separated from your body. The one people will be stronger than the other people. The elder will serve the younger. Comment. Yahweh sees it coming that the elder will serve the younger. Verse 24. When her days to be delivered were fulfilled, behold, there were twins in her womb. The first came out red all over, like a hairy garment. They named him Esau. After that, his brother came out, and his hand had hold on Esau's heel. He was named Jacob. Isaac was 60 years old when she bore them. Comment. Esau means hairy or rough to the touch. He'll have a second name, Edom, which means red. He was hairy and red, Esau and Edom, two names for the same person. Isaac was 60 when the twins were born. We do the math and find that he and Rebekah were without children for 20 years until Yahweh answered Isaac's prayers. Jacob's hand on Esau's heel was a prophetic sign that Jacob would be competitive with Esau. The struggling that started in the womb will continue. Their posterity will be competitive, the competitive nations Israel and Edom. Abraham died earlier in the chapter before the grandsons were born, but it turns out, if we do some more math, that Abraham's grandsons Esau and Jacob were 15 years old when Abraham died. The New Testament confirms it, Hebrews 11:9, which says that Abraham dwelled in tents with Jacob. Sure enough, if we check the math in Genesis, that's correct, that Abraham's life overlapped 15 years with Jacob's life. So, with Ab- in this chapter, with Abraham dying first, then his twin grandsons being born, The chapter was in topical order rather than chronological order. It's fun to know that Abraham not only lived to see a son born to Sarah, but he lived to see his grandsons. Yahweh always comes through beyond our imagination. Verse 27. The boys grew. Esau was a skillful hunter, a man of the field. Jacob was a quiet man living in tents. Comment, Jacob's quiet and like the tents better than the field, but Jacob's competitive He's going to work to establish himself. And let's not take Jacob for a soft man. Soon he'll wrestle all night with the angel of the Lord, and though he's outmatched, he'll still refuse to give up. Verse 28. Now Isaac loved Esau because he ate his venison. Rebekah loved Jacob. Comment, it's not a pretty sight. Rebekah favored Jacob, and Isaac favored Esau. The next few verses tell a brief but important story. Verse 29. Jacob boiled stew. Esau came in from the field, and he was famished. Esau said to Jacob, Please feed me with some of that red stew, for I am famished. Therefore his name was called Edom. Comment, here we see the stew is red, so that's another reason we associate red with Esau. Before Jacob will agree to give Esau any stew, verse 31, Jacob said, First sell me your birthright. Comment, since Esau was born first, he has a birthright, which has to do with inheritance of the father's property. The birthright gives 
the firstborn a double portion of the property. The birthright does not have to do with inheritance of God's covenant. The bequeathing of the covenant will come later when Isaac will confer the blessing on one or the other of them. Verse 32. Esau said, Behold, I am about to die. What good is the birthright to me? Comment. If Esau is still upright, talking and walking, he's not anywhere close to dying from hunger. He just doesn't have proper self-restraint. He's not taking control of himself. He's not self-disciplined. He's willing to sacrifice the long term for a very short term comfort. Verse 33. Jacob said, Swear to me first. He swore to him. He sold his birthright to Jacob. Comment, such a fateful, fateful decision for Esau, but the Lord knew it was coming. He already said it when they were in the womb, the elder will serve the younger. There's such a contrast between the impetuous Esau who threw away his inheritance and his grandfather Abraham who went to the uttermost to obtain and secure his inheritance. Abraham had it all and Esau had none when it came to wisdom, self-control, regard for the future, and good judgment. Esau threw away his inheritance just like that. Verse 34, Jacob gave Esau bread and lentil stew. He ate and drank, rose up, and went his way. So Esau despised his birthright. Comment. We all have a rich inheritance waiting for us in the Lord, but many are like Esau. We despise our inheritance and throw it away with no self-control and little regard for the future. On another subject, Esau and Jacob made a deal. Every deal is before the Lord. Our word is our word. So let's be careful before we open our mouths because the future is in our mouth. There should be no such thing as a casual commitment. We should be like our Father in heaven whose word is his word. Genesis 26 is next at landofhavilah.net. Genesis 26. This is the map of Genesis 25. Canaan is here. Rebekah's home place in Padanaram was here. Abraham sent his sons by Keturah eastward to the east country, it says, so somewhere east of Canaan. Midian became a nation associated with the northwestern part of the Arabian Peninsula. After Abraham died, Isaac lived by Bir Lahayroi, which was somewhere in the desert wilderness to the south, on the route to Egypt. Abraham's tents were in southern Canaan. This is the location of the cave of Machpelah, also known today as the Tomb of the Patriarchs. It's in the modern city of Hebron. Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob are all buried there. There's a long valley that extends from the Sea of Galilee down the Jordan River, down through the Dead Sea, and below that all the way to the Gulf of Aqaba. The whole thing's a geological rift valley, one long trench from the Sea of Galilee to the Gulf of Aqaba. Some of it around the Dead Sea especially is below sea level, the Bible calls that valley associated with the Jordan River and the Dead Sea the Araba. The slopes going down to the Araba originate in the vegetated highlands and they get more barren as the elevation decreases. South of the Dead Sea, on the eastern side of the Araba, there's a mountain range running parallel to the Araba, north and south, about 100 miles long and 20 miles wide. This will be the dwelling place of the Edomites, Esau's descendants, the nation of Edom. Genesis 26 is next.